how can God hear everyone's prayers all at the same time? Have you ever wondered that? Uh, we're all sitting in here today, a couple of hundred people here, and, and we're all praying at the same time. How can God hear my prayer and then hear my brother's prayer across the room and hear somebody else's prayer from the other side of the world all at the same time? I think, well, how is that going to happen? Well, that's probably why God doesn't hear my prayers, because there's so many prayers that he's got to answer all at the same time. I, I must admit this is a simple, but yet it is a difficult question to answer and I think uh, C.S. Lewis, he, he kind of, he has a take on this that, that may, be, may, may be helpful to us today in understanding this concept. C.S. Lewis, and if you bear with me to read just a, a few passages from his book, Mere Christianity, he says in the chapter Time and Beyond Time, Lewis says that uh, uh, answering this question, how can God attend to several hundred million prayers at the same moment in time? Uh, Lewis addresses this matter. And he says, almost certainly God is not in time, he says. His life does not consist of moments following one another, as does ours. If a million people are praying to him at 1030 tonight, he need not listen to them all in that one little snippet of time, which we call 1030. 1030 and every other moment from the beginning of the world is always the present for God. If you like to put it that way, he has all eternity in which to listen to the split second of prayer put up by a pilot as his plane is crashing in flames. He says, this is difficult to understand. But he says, let me try to give you something, not the same, but a little bit like it. He gives a little analogy. He says, suppose I am writing a novel. I write in that novel the words, Mary laid down her work. The next moment came a knock at the door. For Mary, who has to live in the imaginary time of my story, there is no interval between putting down the work and hearing the knock. But I, who am Mary's maker, do not live in that imaginary time at all. He says, between writing the first half of that sentence and the second, I might sit down for three hours and think steadily about Mary. I could think about Mary as if she was the only character in the book and for as long as I please and the hours I spent in doing so would not appear in Mary's time in the book, the time inside the story at all. He said, this is not a perfect illustration, of course, but it may just give us a glimpse of what I believe to be the truth, that God is not hurried along in the time stream of this universe any more than an author is hurried along in the imaginary time of his own novel. He has infinite attention to spare for each one of us. He does not have to deal with us in the mass. You are as much alone with him as if you were the only being he ever created. When Christ died, he died for you individually, just as much as you had been the only man or woman in this world. Amen. According to C.S. Lewis, when you pray, it's as if you're stepping into the dimension of the eternal. Amen. That that's why God is not bound by our time. He's not limited to the, 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 the chronology of our time clock, the seconds and minutes and, and moments that goes by. He stands outside of time. And so when you pray, he hears your prayers, not within the confines of time, but he hears your prayers, as it were, through the echo of eternity that has no time. Amen. And if eternity has no time, if you will, then it's as if your prayers are constantly before God. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, this is how powerful prayer is, is when you begin to talk to the Lord, when you enter into your prayer closet, you close that door, you get on your knees, and you begin to call upon the name of Jesus. It's as if you step into the dimension and the realm of eternity. It's as if you are suspended between earth and heaven. Oh, the moment you open up your mouth, you can be in the middle of a crisis you can be in the middle of the job you can be right where you are 
sitting there today but when you begin to commune with God all of a sudden the physical material world begins to fade in the background and you are in the presence of eternity that's why the writer of Romans says come boldly before the throne of grace what throne we don't have a throne in here when you begin to pray in faith you come before the throne room of God you come into the very palace and presence of the king of kings and the lord of lords when you pray you enter into a new dimension oh I wish to God this morning somebody would get a revelation of just how powerful your prayer is you don't have to sound all eloquent you don't have to pray like the king James bible you don't have to sound like Alexander Scorby oh but from the simple cries of your heart this God he hears every prayer this God will incline his ear to the cries of your heart how does he hear all of our prayer at the same time oh because he's a God of eternity